Hi, hope you're having a great day. It's a wet and rainy November day here in New Orleans at KD Cuts. You can hear the rain pounding down on the shop roof. Today we're starting a video series on putting together Tandy's Bison Overnight Bag. Here's the kit. If you follow my channel, you know that I've already done a series on putting together the postal bag. The instructions in the postal bag were very confusing and needed a lot of help. If you want to put together the postal bag, you do yourself a favor if you go watch my video series. The instructions in, in, in this kit are a little clearer, but in this series I'm going to definitely help you get this bag done a little easier. Now, you'll notice I'm sporting a beard. I recently finished six weeks of radiation therapy for a cancerous polyp on my vocal cord. I was lucky, caught it early, stage one. I was treated at Two Lanes Cancer Center in downtown New Orleans. Wonderful staff, great people. It's an experience I would rather not have, but having had it, I was very lucky to have the people at Two Lanes to take care of me. Anybody that works in the area of treating cancer deserves all of this, all of our respect and admiration. Now, back to the kit. If you put together this overnight bag by Tandy, it's basically a thousand dollar piece of custom luggage. Tandy puts amazing quality into these bison kits. When they came out three or four years ago, I went to talk to the manager from the Rollins store, and the prices that Tandy sells these at probably are 10 or 15% above their cost. These are really amazing kits. Uh, I really encourage you to put it together. Uh, I think you'll be very happy with the outcome. So let's go to the workbench and get started. Okay, so let's open the kit and take a look at the instructions. Starts off with the parts list, which is accurate. <laughs> In the postal sack, the parts list was very confusing. Okay, before you start doing the kit, you have to make a decision. Are you going to bevel and uh, burnish the edges, or are you, and are you going to do any tooling and, of course, put in your maker's mark? Now, in the postal sack, I uh, did not do anything to the edges. I left them as is. You can do that. Looks great. It's just a style thing. For this overnight bag, I'm going to go ahead and do some uh, beveling and uh, burnishing on the edges. You can hear my vicious dachshund in the background protecting me in the backyard. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of tooling, which I'll show you later, and put in my maker's mark. So, the instructions start off with attaching the closure flap to the handles. Steps through putting in the flap attachment, the back putting on the back handle. Step four the gusset attachment, step five, the front handle, step six, they talk about uh, putting on the buckle for the, for the flap, for the main flap. This is the third time I'm doing this kit, and again, you can hear my dog going crazy. This is the third time I've done this kit, and this time I'm going to use a button stud instead of the buckle. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I like working with button studs. On the postal sack I use two button studs to cinch the shoulder strap behind the Conway buckles comes out nice and I think it's a, uh, an add to the kit step seven is where things get a little foggy and they tell you what to do but they don't really give you a lot of details so the rest of the steps are about assembly we'll get into that I'm gonna show you some nice hacks or cheats they're gonna help you a lot in uh, putting this kit together We're going to start to work on the kit by jumping to step seven and working on the base first. It is uh, L on the parts list. Here we go, step seven. Step seven basically just says to gouge and shape the base <laughs> so 
Maybe if you uh, magnify the picture, you can figure it out. But basically what you need to do is put a gouge line a half an inch in off of each edge. So that's a half an inch. You can see that? That's a half an inch. There's a half an inch. Now, the beginning of the instructions, they talk about using a V-gouger. It perf works perfectly fine. I, I use a different technique where I use a stitching groover. I hope you like my modified <laughs> guide. Lost the original. And the French Skyver. It's a different way to do it. You can do it with a V-gouger. You can do it this way. I just... Uh, not very good with a V-gouger. So I'm going to show you a different way to do it. All right, I've gouged three sides. I'm going to do one side for you live. Now I'm marked with red Sharpie. You can mark it with pencil any, any way you want. This is never going to show, right? It's on the inside of the bag. So I'm simply going to take Okay. Um, that was one pass, and I'm going to do a second pass. I've done just as good with a, with a stitching groover as you would do with a V-gouger. You're going to notice I've marked a diagonal line from the corner to the gouge line. This is the first hack I'm going to show you that is going to make assembling this bag so easy. I'm simply going to take my straight knife, my Japanese knife, and I'm going to carefully from the corner to my gouge line I made a cut. When I go to fold this up to shape this, that one little hack is going to make things so much easier. When I go to sew it, it's really going to help. So I'm going to finish those up. So now that I've uh, put the stitching groove on all the lines, I'm going to take my quarter inch French skiver and I'm simply going to skive behind the line to remove some more material. Okay? I use a quarter inch skiver because that's the only one I have. <laughs> And that's it, fellas. And again, you can hear Reese in the background protecting me. So, on the stitching groover, I did two passes on each line. I felt like that was enough. And again, you're going to get constant comment from Reese. So, I'm going to do all four lines and I'm going to shape it and form it up and show you what it looks like. So, we're going to end part one in this video series by showing you what it looks like. I've started to form it up. I've sprayed water into my groove and I've shaped it up. The shape doesn't have to be perfect, but you'll notice the relief line, the little relief cut that I put in those corners. When you go to sew this, that is going to make things a lot easier. So, that's part one. Part two, we'll dive a little deeper into this bag assembly.